from my first girl school secondary and I'm 14 years old. So let me share a little bit about me. I am a member of my school's robotics club and I have been doing robotics since I was 10. I really enjoy STEM, especially in the field of robotics and competitive programming. I have won many awards, such as achieving the best presentation award for IQ and CoSpace Rescue First Steps U19. Despite this being my third time doing Cold Space, it is actually my first time participating in our Cap Cold Space Grand Prix U19 category as I wanted to learn something new during the holidays. For Grand Prix, I investigated many tool problems. What is the best and most efficient light checking algorithm? And how do I find the shortest path easily? After experimenting with various methods, I finally settled on using a modified version of proportional, integral, and derivative line checking, and the shortest path algorithm, Dijkstra. These methods helped me pass through all seven waypoints and reach the finish line in an average of 1 minute and 58 seconds. In conclusion, although I'm pretty satisfied with my results, I still feel that I can improve on turning edge junctions, which is not only slow, but also highly inaccurate. The mission of the challenge is to pass through all seven waypoints circle here in the shortest time possible. While analyzing the challenge, I took note of four possible areas that I should look into. First, instead of taking the harlot to path, my robot can U-turn after stopping at the waypoints and save time. Second, there is a steep incline, which my robot may have difficulty moving up or down the incline, and I need to adjust the speed accordingly. Third, the light color marker circle here may interfere with my PID line tracking as the R sensors were sensors at white. Last, there are tricky lines on some parts of the map, which I need to reduce the speed to allow for more time for line tracking. With these in mind, I went on to implement my strategies. I will discuss two strategies, PID line tracking and shortest path algorithm, Dijkstra. In PID line tracking, I calculated the error, which is the distance between the robot's optimum and current position. I set the optimal position to the middle of the R sensors L1 and R1. In this case, let the current position of the line be between L1 and L2. The error is negative 0.4 minus 0 0.0, which is equal to negative 0.4. As such, the robot needs to turn left to correct itself, such that the error is 0.0. After calculating the error, I can go on to calculate proportional, integral, and derivative values. For proportional, it affects the rates of turning of the robot, as well as its direction. An error of greater magnitude will result in a proportional value of greater magnitude, and thus a higher rate of turning, as there will be more urgency for the robot to correct itself. As for direction, a negative proportional value results in a robot turning left, while a positive one results in a robot turning right. For integral, it is a sum of all errors since the robot starts its PID line tracking. Since positive right errors should cancel the negative left errors, the sum of all errors should be zero. For derivative, it anticipates the next error by taking the current error minus the previous error. This can help to mitigate the effects of a large proportional value if the current error has reduced significantly. Next, I will multiply each of the values by a constant, which I need to tune, and add them together to give the rates of turning. For the shortest path algorithms, I shortlisted three of them, which will help me plan the best route. The Dijkstra algorithm finds the shortest path from the starting nodes to all other nodes. It is useful in finding the shortest path to all compulsory waypoints without discerning their order beforehand. The A star search algorithm finds the shortest path from starting node to ending node. It is useful in finding the shortest path while ensuring that the last waypoint is as close to the finish line as possible. The Bellman Fox algorithm has similar usage to Dijkstra, but it also works on negatively weighted graphs which is not needed for the mission and thus adds unnecessary runtime. In the end, I chose Dijkstra algorithm as it is the easiest to implement as compared to a star search algorithm. 
that is the code is set the distance to traverse the first node, in this case, down zero to zero, and all other nodes to infinity. We can push the pair of distance zero and node zero into a priority queue. Next, we try to unvisit the neighbors on node zero, which are nodes three and four in this case, and we set the distance to visit node three to two, and the distance to visit node four to four, since these distances are shorter than infinity. We will then pop out node 0 from the priority queue and push the distances 2 and 4 and nodes 3 and 4 respectively into the priority queue, which arranges the distances according to increasing order. This repeats until the priority queue is empty. Another reason I chose dice shot algorithm is that looking at the map, I only need to check for 4 waypoints and I do not need to consider proximity of the last waypoint to the finish line as only each pair in the 4 waypoint circle need to be considered. I can visit the 3 rightmost waypoints in any order as long as I visit the bottom left waypoints last. The rest of the path is obvious. Using this algorithm, I converted all the compulsory nodes, optional nodes, and necessary rows to a weighted bidirectional graph. To implement these strategies, I needed to research on how others have implemented them so as to get a better idea on how they can be coded. This is done by looking through research papers. I also ran my code in the graphical user interface or GUI, and from there, I can debug and improve on my code. I needed to debug three problems so as to make my code more reliable. First, I needed to overcome the steep incline. It was hard for the robot to climb up the incline while I track at the same time. The robot also oscillated too much while moving down the incline, due to the robot moving too fast and deviating off the track more easily. To solve this, I increased the speed of the robot when climbing up or when rotation x is more than 2 to give it more power when moving upwards and decrease the speed when it moves down or when rotation x is less than 2 to give it more time to land track. The second problem was that the IR sensors sense light color markers as a white line, and line track them instead. Thus, I decided to shift my optimal position to the right and track the IR sensors from the right, that is, from R3. So if the light is at R3, the robot will correct itself by turning left, but as long as there is a line between R1 and R2, the robot will move straight and not turn left. Third, some parts of the map had tricky lines which caused the robot to fall off the track easily. To solve this problem, I reduced the speed so as to allow for more time for the robot to correct itself and ensure higher accuracy. I also increased the constant proportional so as to allow the robot to oscillate more on the line for higher accuracy. In conclusion, I chose PID over conditional steering as PID makes the path smoother with the inclusion of integral and derivative, especially at tricky lines, as it takes into account previous errors. But conditional steering only checks the current position of the robot. If I were asked to improve my code, I would change the way I turn at junctions. Currently, the robot will turn exactly 90 degrees, that is, rotation z equals the initial rotation z plus minus 90. However, the wheel speeds must be compromised to ensure accuracy of turning, which is quite slow. Instead, I can allow the robot to turn onto one of the IR sensors sensors the white line so that it can continue line tracking immediately after turning. The robot can turn at higher speeds too. The learning experience of Cold Space Grand Prix is far beyond rewarding. In terms of code, I feel that I have done way more hard coding and less soft coding than Cold Space Rescue. Soft code is pretty fun functions that can be used on any map while hard code is code that can vary from map to map. That is, one piece of hard code may be able to work on one map, but not another. I have also learned the various algorithms, such as PID and shortest path, which are applicable even in real-life robotics such as self-driving buses and MRT. So all aspiring code-based participants out there, do not give up when the robot falls off the track. With that, my presentation has come to an end. Thank you for your kind attention. Goodbye!